and welcome back to our Wednesday night live success tip here on the Destiny Global Facebook page. My name is Carmen O'Quinn and I am one of the trainers here with Destiny Global and this handsome lad. My name is Jackie, the handsome lad. <laughs> lad, is that like an older word? That's yeah, like Irish, isn't it? Oh, it is We're like Irish. Irish. Oh, you are, O'Quinn. Oh, uh -huh. You are a marriage. <laughs> Anyway, welcome to our Wednesday night live success tip. Um, super duper excited to be here with you this Wednesday. It's a little bit different. Normally, um, myself, Jackie, and the CEO of the company, Mr. Ken Brown, we all kind of rotate and do a success tip every other every other week. But we decided since this was the month of February, and if you didn't know, in case you were you crawled under a rock <laughs> this week, we are celebrating Valentine's Day, V Day. V day, it's harder to do on V day, v -day. <laughs> on camera. Um, Valentine's Day, and it is like the month of love. It's it's honestly my second favorite holiday, right after Christmas, because it's like it celebrate. Is. It what? It is your second favorite holiday. It is like everybody like Valentine's Day is like a whole ordeal around here. Like everybody gets extra love, extra gifts, <laughs> because it's 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 just you know it's one of those holidays. I think it never hurts to be reminded to love your fellow human being, especially in this world we live in today. So tonight we're gonna be talking about something that we're both super passionate about, which is marriage. Um, normally we train at First Steps to Success, creating a dynasty, and it's helping people get past the things that have been stopping them, helping them push through the barriers, the obstacles that have kept them stuck, that have kept them broke, that have kept them in a cycle of self-sabotage and failing, teaching people how to grow their income, teaching people how to pay off their debt, including their mortgage in five to seven years. And so tonight we're gonna to be talking about something that we're equally passionate about in both our personal and our professional life, as well as in our own lives. So make sure as you're watching, those little emojis down there, you know, the thumbs up and the hearts and the hearts. mad face and the sad face, those are like Facebook Live currency. They let us know you're here. Oh, I see them. <laughs> and if you hear something that you like, go ahead and comment down below. We will be looking at all those comments after we're done so that we don't get on bunny trails during. And then if something resonates with you, make sure to share this. Listen, we live in a world where the divorce rate is more than 50%. And those that do stay married normally aren't married happily. And so anytime there's somebody who's overcome some things and has some tips that have proven to work, um, you know, and it's free, F-R-E-E. -E. <laughs> That's worth a share. So anyway, uh, yeah. So tonight, one of the things we're going to talk about, she said, she, she actually alluded to it several times. She talked about um, paying off debt and she talked about the divorce rate. Um, one of the number one issues, you know, we talk about success tips. Today, we're talking specifically success tips about relationships, when it, especially when it's the holidays. And when she talks about us being passionate about something, she's talking about us being passionate about people's relationships, people's marriages. Um, having come through our own dark times, then once you come through that place and you see how good marriage can be, you can really get eager to want to see other people's marriages be equally as good as well. And so tonight, one of the things that we have learned is that people oftentimes have marriage difficulties when it comes around money. No way. <laughs> someone's spending too much, someone's not making enough and that sort of thing. And it's over like 50 something percent. I love that statistic. We've talked about it a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't love the divorce rate. I love the perspective that even the people who are still married are not married happily. And I think it's fair to say that if one of the number one reasons that people get a divorce is over money, then that means that it's also fair to say one of the number one arguments inside of a successful marriage is successful being defined as they are still together or you're still together one of them, I hope you're still together. One of the most common um, stressors or, or disagreements is always around money. So we learned some things several years ago that's helped us and we want to be able to share that with you tonight. Now, early on, you need to understand we, we were at early on. We were fortunate enough to both be fairly successful fairly quickly. We were both entrepreneurs in our early 20s um, yeah. and we oftentimes train on that. But so money, making money wasn't necessarily the issue. It was planning where money was going to go and it was spending money and not being on the same page. For example, I didn't necessarily care about wearing high heels, 
but Carmen loved high heels. In fact, she still loves high heels. So Carmen bought a lot of shoes. And early on, that was a problem for me in our marriage. Um, yeah, I, I did love not just high heels. I did not discriminate against the flats and the sneakers and the cute sandals. I, I didn't. And How shoes? What are they called? What are you, slippers? Slippers. No, I didn't like slippers back then. That's been in the past five years. <laughs> But I like had the shoe thing and as growing up poor, like we grow, both grew up poor. I grew up in a double wide trailer. He grew up in a single wide trailer and <laughs> <laughs> my house was twice as big as yours. <laughs> and so, uh, we eventually, when I turned like 17, moved into like a regular stick built home, but I never had a lot of shoes and a lot of the things I did had came from Payless. And I can remember watching movies on TV and seeing like shoe closets. And it was a personal mandate goal of mine to, to possess 200 pairs of shoes. And so <laughs> I was very goal oriented and I would motivate, motivate, and I needed to hit that goal. And so I did like, but I, here's, but here's the thing. They weren't like shoe show shoes. It wasn't like pay less shoes. No, no. I mean, listen, I, I, you know, we were making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Um, that first year I had gotten my business up to $720,000 a year. And at your young 20 year old self, like that's a crap ton of money. And so and you don't ever realize business goes through seasons. You don't ever realize that, hey, I could be doing something else with this money. Like, I'm just like, I got all this money. Like, shoes is is it, right? And so I bought a lot of shoes. And the truth is, I spent a lot of money not just on shoes. I was very, very, I was, a, I, out of the two of us, I was like the spender. I was like, you know, let's get a limo. I don't want to cook. Let's go to dinner. It wasn't all that though. It was, yeah, it was, it was even groceries. It was just, it was just not it having was, a plan for money. It was all of it. And then I would even buy you shoes. <laughs> yeah, it was just, yeah, she would. It was, uh, uh, you still do actually. So the. The, this all came to a head really when we ended up going through this dark season in marriage because what really came out of it was what we realized is, is disagreements about stuff like money and finances that bleeds over into other areas as well. Disagreements, lack of communication more than anything. It was probably as much in our case, it was as much about a lack of communication that led to divorce as disagreements. I mean, there was both, right? But you would, it was easy to avoid conversation when, and money is something that people will avoid conversation about. And in, in our case, she had her own business. She was a strong, independent woman. I had opinions about finances, but I felt like, I don't know if I, what I should say, what I shouldn't say. And I'm not trying to create an argument. She's worked really hard for what she's got. And what I felt like I was seeing, and I want you to understand what I felt like I was seeing and what I was seeing was two different things. What I felt like I was seeing was somebody who I'm wanting to build a life with, but she's making no plans for how she's going to spend this life. I felt like all the resources were getting used up and it was fine in the moment because we were making money and we weren't in debt. We weren't, you know, we were in debt a little bit actually in the beginning, but we weren't like getting in deeper in debt. We were making all the payments, making the bills, doing the things, right? So we weren't getting behind the eight ball, but I felt like that we weren't planning for the future. And that, that kind of concerned me a little bit. So after we ended up going through what well, we went through. A year of heck. The first year of marriage. You know, people say it's like the honeymoon stage. It was not because we didn't, we really didn't have a lot of communication and including money. We were two individuals and two businesses. And when we got married, it was still, even though we merged it, there wasn't a lot of conversations that ever took place. Right. Ever. Like we weren't on the same page with what our goals were for spending, what we were spending, what we were saving. It was just like this. We just didn't talk about it really. Yeah, and then we even we even outside of our business accounts, like all of our finances were together too. Yeah. That was a weird thing. Like we've always believed in that, but we didn't really talk about it, which you know, and and it led to, and I mean, it led to a lot of problems, but one of the things it led to was kind of the roommate syndrome early in marriage where, you know, it's kind of like she's doing her thing. I'm doing my thing. We're sort of think we're on the same page, but we're not kind of on the same page. Right? So when we ended up going through crap, almost got a divorce, the whole nine yards on the other side of that really beautiful things happened. Well, and hold on. Cause it, and also, you know, being growing up poor and being an independent woman, I really had issues with um, like authority, so to say, or accountability is how I viewed it. Like I viewed it as 
I'm making money. I'll go buy what I want. I like neither one of us had a ton of financial training um, at all. Like at least I can speak for myself. Like I wasn't taught to be a saver or an investor. I was fully conditioned to be a spender. And so like the thought of like him telling me I couldn't go buy shoes when I just worked hard was like, what? And so that was, um, I don't know. That was just a weird thing in the, in, in the beginning for me too. Totally. So one of the things that happened as we were coming on the other side of this is we got some marriage coaching and that marriage coaching ended up really saving our marriage, but it didn't really, I mean, listen, I'm going to share with you tonight what we, one little strategy we got out of this, which was very, very helpful. And it's very, very simple. Um, but the, I just want to say that healing our marriage did so much more than just heal our relationship. We learned so much about when you learn how to communicate with your spouse, you learn how to communicate better with everyone else. When you have your, your marriage, when you're on the same page inside of marriage, like it's really is in so many ways us against the world. And there's a great sort of a, a comfort there that is, is hard to explain that I really wish everybody could experience what that feels like. Um, one of the things I remember a coaching appointment that I had specifically and my coach at the time, Dr. Jack said to me, he said, and this is a man, they were in their seventies. They'd been married forever. And he said to me, he said, I said, he said, Jackie, what can we work on today? And I said, you know, I got this thing that's bugging me. I, I said, I feel like Carmen's spending a lot of money. Um, and like, I don't know what to say to her or, or how to bring this conversation up. Cause I just feel like it's, she doesn't need to spend that much money. Like we've got plans and, and things we, we need to accomplish together. And at this point we had talked about the future and we had talked about some of our plans together. And he said to me, he said, let me stop you right there. And this was big. He said, are you and Carmen on the exact same page with your financial goals? And I was like, yeah, I think so. And he said, listen to me carefully, Jackie. Do you both want to get to the same financial destination? And are you both crystal clear on getting there? And I said, yes, I know that for sure. At this point, we had discussed it. We were healing our marriage. And I said, yes, absolutely. And he said, Jackie, have you ever went to the store and bought something ever in your life and later thought maybe you shouldn't have bought that? Maybe you shouldn't have spent money on that? And I said, yes. And he says, why do you feel like you thought you didn't need to spend money? And I said, it's simple. Because I know I should use that money for something else. I know there's other things that other plans for that money and a better thing I could do with that money. And he said, so you have a goal and you're able to check yourself when you make mistakes. And I said, yes. He goes, do your wife, does your wife have the same ability? And I said, yes. He goes, do you want to know how to talk to her? And I said, yes. And here's what he told me. He said, if you know that you're on the exact same page as your wife, then I don't want you to talk to her at all about what she spends money on. If you're on the same page and you have the same financial goals and you stay on track with the same financial goals, he said, Jackie, I assure you, the reality is she spends money. Maybe she buys a pair of shoes from time to time. But she also has a thing in her that says, maybe I shouldn't have done this. And I got to tell you, that's the coaching he gave me. So when I stopped focusing on what Carmen was doing and what shoes she was buying, I learned something. <laughs> <laughs> what did you learn? <laughs> this is a part of the story she loves. I stopped focusing on her. I thought, you know what? This man told me this much. And it was really hard, by the way, to think that I couldn't say anything to her, really, other than make certain that we're on the same page. And we were. It was really hard at first. But I just started focusing on myself. And I began to realize that sometimes I was spending more money than she was. And I hadn't even thought of it, looked at it, or paid attention. But here's why. Here's the biggest difference. She would, you know, buy little things. And, and when we talk about her buying shoes in the early stages, it was a lot. But by this point in our marriage, we had started getting some financial training along the way. So it wasn't like it was happening all the time, you know, but I was still was still bugging me. Right. Because I felt like oh, she shouldn't be doing that. She shouldn't be doing that. And I started looking at, well, what am I doing? And I began to find out that I was spending money. I like to spend money on things, but I was making bigger purchases just less often. She was making smaller purchases more often and it looked like it was a lot more. Now, maybe it was a little bit more overall. Who knows? We never actually tracked about the dollar. But I just learned that as long as you're on the same page, this is the, that was really the key takeaway. As long as you're on the same page together, I mean, that's really everything. 
No, and I it was like I can remember feeling, you know, because I growing up, I'm sure a lot of us have seen like I can remember my grandma from a, a, a young age watching her bring something home and I would go in the house and distract my grandpa and like she would sneak it in the house. And so when I and I and we hadn't gotten to that point in marriage, thank goodness. But I can remember bringing stuff home and he'd be like, well, what's this for? Well, how's that? What'd you pay for this? What'd you pay for that? And I would immediately get defensive, right? So he's asking a question, just trying to be responsible to make sure our, our finances are moving in the right. And I'm sitting here getting response, you know, defensive, which was my own issue. But I can remember the day I bought something and I got home and I almost didn't want him to notice it because I didn't want him to ask about it. And it was the first time and it was a decoration. And that he, was the other weakness you had. <laughs> oh, that was the other weakness. She bought the craziest... That was decorations. We like, still have most of it. We have, I bought three sticks one time. They were uh, like $27 for three sticks painted red. We still have those as decoration. I will keep them till I'm 90 because, you know, we got to get our money out of them. But I had bought some decoration and he actually noticed it because it was whatever. It was kind of one that you would notice. It was right when you walked in on our entry table. And he's like, oh, did you just get that lamp? He's like, I like it. And I was like, oh, Okay. And I'm like waiting for like the questions, right? And he, he didn't ask them. He didn't bring them. And at this point, I did not know that he had got coaching on this. But from my perspective, here's what happened. So he started trusting me with our finances. He started trusting my decisions. He started trusting my ability to make good decisions. And what I will tell you that did inside of me, it gave me like a this great responsibility to be a good steward. It gave me this like, and it was an unspoken expectation. He never said, I expect you to be a good steward. We kind of expected each other to be good stewards. But when he just trusted me to do it, it made me want to live up to that. It made me want to be more responsible. And it's so funny because I think in the beginning of our relationship, you definitely started off as the more frugal, oh, yeah. more like... More, it wasn't even more frugal. I was less frugal than I thought it was. That's the truth. When I got less focused on her, I saw where I was making a lot of bad decisions financially when I got my focus off of her. And that wasn't, he didn't tell me to do that. I just happened to naturally do it. But what ended up happening, I was more financially aware. That's the best yeah, word. Yeah. But that changed. <laughs> Today, it is like, I am the penny pincher. I am like, do 100%. we really need this? I am like, the thermostat is set at 66 degrees. You know, like, if our kids need shoes, like, let's go to the secondhand kids store. We don't need to go spend $50 on freaking tennis shoes. Like, I am that, you know, we bought our daughter a ride on unicorn one year for her birthday, and it dropped in price two times, and I hauled the thing back to the store to get the price difference. Like, I'm that person today. But it was, it all started with that yeah. one piece of advice that you followed. Yeah, we're in a far better financial position today, by the way, than we were even back then. Meaning we have more savings, a higher net worth, higher everything now. And she's like, back then, it was, back then she would have never done that. But at the same time, over the years, here's the, here's the most important part. I want to give you some actionable you can take away. It's important that you have conversations with your spouse and you are both on the same page with where you want to go. What does your future look like? And and what do you want it to look like when you get there? Like, what do you want your retirement years to look like? Or what do you want your older years to look like? What kind of house do you want to have? Life do you want to live? And are you making steps, even if they're baby steps, are you making steps in that direction? And then it's a matter of, periodically, however you want to do this. Some people want to come together, you know, every week and go over the finances. They want to have a once a month business meeting. All I'm going to tell you is once a quarter, periodically, sometime you need to come together with you and your spouse, go away for the weekend or whatever. And you need to talk about your future and dream a little bit and see if some of your dreams are changing. You know, listen, some of our dreams changed after we had kids on what we actually wanted the rest of our lives to look like. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's important that you have those conversations and you stay on the same page. And as you continue to grow together and give each other grace, mistakes are going to happen. I do not. I, I can't even imagine the last time I went to Carmen and said, you know, you shouldn't have bought that. Or did you need that? Or should we have bought that? Or I, I don't know. It's probably been years. I don't know. It's been a lot. Like it's 
It's almost never happened, and I'm not going to say never, but it's almost never happened since I got that coaching all those years ago. And likewise, you know, a lot of times she doesn't, I have to say, you know, maybe she'll tell me, I'll think about doing something. I just thought I'd do something recently. And she's like, yeah, I think you should do it. And the crazy thing is, is it's spending money and, you know, I wasn't planning to do it. And then all of a sudden I'm like, okay. And then I've got a burden on me like, but is it the right decision? And is it the right decision right now? Because it takes financial resources. And is it important enough to, to make that decision? You know, um, and so it's, you, you tend to work together and all of a sudden, here's what starts to happen. And I promise you, some of you think this is, there's no way this can happen. But, and I'm, we're just, we only have a little bit of time with you tonight, so we're sharing a small little tip with you. But here's what starts to happen. You start really becoming consciously aware of how you can work to make this better. And you have faith knowing that I don't have to worry about her making this better. I already know she's doing her best to make this, and this being our marriage, our union. She's doing her part to help make this better. And when you're both working individually to make the relationship better, the whole thing is so much better. 100% agree. And you know, those conversations, we started having them on like date nights. Every Friday night, we would just, we start, it started with, where do you, like if failure wasn't an option. Wait a minute. Date your spouse. You need to be dating your spouse. <laughs> yes. Once a week. Yeah, we could have done a whole tip just on that. We could have done a whole tip Because we that. weren't doing that in the beginning either, at least regularly. But yeah, we go on a date every Friday and it was like, okay, we, would, we wouldn't talk about work. The only thing we would talk about, we didn't have kids in the beginning. So it would be talking about like our future, how many kids we wanted, where we wanted to live, where we wanted to vacation, Um, you know, what 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 we thought our future looked like and getting down to the nitty gritty. And I will tell you- And the financial side of that, knowing what that was gonna take financially. Absolutely, like if you wanna take a vacation to Bora Bora, what does that cost? We, I, I want like a hundred acre compound. Like what, there's a cost to that. And you know, most people never plan to fail, they fail to plan. And that includes your finances. So when we started sitting down and having those conversations and in the beginning, in the beginning, they were a little awkward. They were a little messy. They were a little like clumsy, if you will. But as we started to get on the same page, it was uh, it was amazing. And the peace between us, the harmony between us, and we both kind of rose up and even started becoming more financially responsible through that one thing, that one piece of advice. And so speaking of marriage and speaking of growing together, because listen, if you don't, I'm a firm believer that if you don't grow together, which means you are both growing in your skill together, you're both growing in your goals together. If you don't grow together, growing apart. you're growing apart. And one of the things that Destiny Global is on a mandate to do is to help families leave, build a dynasty, build a legacy that will last long after they're gone. And uh, for the first time, Destiny Global is actually, we are bringing an event called, um, it's a couples event by Mark Gunger. And it is gonna be March 18th and 19th. It's a virtual event. 18th so, and 19th, March 18th and 19th. <laughs> Yeah, mark a, little it on, over, a little over a month away. Mark it on your calendar. We will put the link down in the comments for the event. And it's called Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage. And Mark Gunger is world renowned. He is known for being witty, funny. He brings like marriage advice that makes sense in problems that you and I are facing in today's world. But he makes it lighthearted and funny. So you're going to laugh. You're not feeling like you're getting good advice because you're laughing. But you walk away going, wow. That was really good. There was something to that. And it's virtual, so you can make a weekend out of it. It's going to be a Friday afternoon, evening, into a Saturday morning, into the lunchtime. And so it's not long. It's not, you know, going to take the whole weekend. But get your tickets. One of the greatest things that you will, the greatest thing you will ever invest into is your marriage. Bar none. You can go make all the money in the world. But if your marriage is in the tank, it's not as fun anyway. It's not, yeah. I would rather be broke under a bridge and have you than be a freaking gazillionaire and not have you, is the truth of the matter. And so March 17th, 18th and 19th, Mark Gunger Couples Event, okay? Now, if you really want to grow together and start building that legacy, coming up April 29th through May 1st is our uh, training event called First Steps to Success. And this is where we're actually going to take you. This is a virtual event as well. We do have watch parties. 
these things will be linked down below so that you can get your tickets, make sure you're there with us. But this is where you're actually going to go through a training event where you're going to learn applicable skills on how to grow your income, on not only how to grow your income, but learning how to pay off your debt, learning how to communicate better inside of your marriage, inside of your family, as well as with your coworkers, making you the most magnetic person in the room and the number one recommended person that what you do. How would you like to learn a skill that could get you, like literally, no matter whether you're just starting or you've been in business for a while, um, we have a gentleman named Stuart Lynn. He went from being a client. He went from being a engineer making $30,000 a year, attended this training, started his own engineering firm, and last year did what? Like $16, $17 million in business? That's his company's, I think is their gross, yes. Yeah, but he built that company. $30,000 a year as an employee. Launched his own business doing 16 to $17 million a year. Well, he broke six figures in income within... Within, I think, two years of launching that business, yeah. he had his first six-figure year, just to put it in perspective. So $40,000 a year, $30,000, $40,000 a year working for somebody else. Two years later, because of the training that he got, he had went in business for himself and had his first personal income year of $100,000. Yep, and now has grown that into So what could happen to you two years from now? What could happen to you two years from now? That's right. And so thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave a comment down below. Let us know where were, you, where were you watching from. And for those of you that are going to be attending the, the Mark Gunger event and First Steps, let us know. I want to know who's going to be there with us virtually at those events. And uh, thank you so much for watching tonight. We will see you in two weeks on another success tip. Who's doing that one? You? Me? I don't know. Ken? Is Ken doing that one? <laughs> one of us are doing it. So we'll see you then.